Hello everyone, my name is Nikki, and if you're a regular viewer of the TVI channel, you will know me as Mrs. TVI. I don't have a car, but I do have a GoPro and an interest in history, architecture, but more specifically, cemeteries. It's time to see where I am and what I'm getting up to in my corner of the TVI channel today. Hi everyone, my name is Nicola, but if regular viewers here, you'll know me as Mrs. TVI. And I am here in a very windy Calderdale and I am at the churches at Heptonstall. So just where I am now there are two churches here. There is one that was ruined, I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can see it. It was ruined uh, by a gale, believe it or not. And then that church was replaced, turn around if you don't want to be on film dear, by this one here, which is the current parish church of Heptonstall. Now there is, there are two famous graves that we are going to explore but first of all we're going to have a look at the old church and we're going to have a look at the new church so just here you can see just how you know this enormous gravestone uh, graveyard with a lot of flat stones and the church in the distance so let's go up this path and take a look and see what we can see inside the old church so we've got some information here about the old St. Thomas a Beckett church and churchyard and it shows what the church previously looked like and then some information about it. It looks like it was uh, a fair sized church, had seating for 815 people and a further 300 in upper galleries I think if I'm reading the right one and then there is a, obviously a large cemetery here as well so let's go inside and see the ruins so here we are inside the church and there's the tower and then obviously this would be have been the main aisle you can see all the, obviously there's no windows or anything left there are still a number of stones on the floor with inscriptions but not very readable except for perhaps this one lots of initials RR, BT, BT, RT and ST and the dates range 1737 at the top to 1778 at the bottom we have a large stone around here let's see if we can see what's written on this one okay we can so in memory of James Shackleton of Slater Incorporated House in Heptonstall uh, elder son of Thomas Shackleton of Woodend Hebden Bridge who died April 1885 age 43 and then Anne, the wife of the above, who died in 1895, I think that is. And then James Sutcliffe Shackle Shackleton. Now this is interesting. James Sutcliffe Shackleton, Lieutenant West Riding Regiment, only son of the above, killed in action in France, April 16th, 1917. So, somebody there who passed away during the war. And there are some other family members here that you can see as well. So that's quite a, a large tablet there. And in, obviously in a prime position in this, or what's left of this ruined church. I'm just here at the bottom of the tower and I've just asked Andy, anything interesting? He said, I can hear some birds going. Don't know if you can, the camera's picking them up, but I can see them too. There's two pigeons just there looking down at me. Better not poop on me, pigeons. So, bang in the middle of the old ruined church here, we've got like a little flower garden. 
and you see these stones there's quite a lot of these dotted around because they're all along the edges here as well but they come from these so you can see these archways here on this side we've got empty pillars where arches would have been and that's where these stones have come from let's go take a look in the new church and find some famous graves Okay, so that's just a little bit of a tour around the old church at the back of us. Now we're going to have a, well, we were going to have a look inside the new church. Unfortunately, it's locked, but we're going to go and have a look in the cemetery and find those famous graves. So I've got a camera woman, hands free. Woohoo! Right, so we're here in the new churchyard, and as you can see here, we've got a lot of sort of very tightly packed graves, and then we've also got a few slabs at the side of the church itself if Victoria if you can pan round go and have a look at those for me be my expert camera woman and again these have got names and dates but some of them are literally like JC 1774 some are just initials some are bigger but a lot of them again are not very readable it's a bit sad that some of them we can't see but there is a lot here that we can so let's go and see what we can find so we've just come around to we're actually by the footpath one of the footpaths that leads into the church and we're at the oh i'm flipping it i don't know which side but we found this let me just take the camera off victoria here now we found this monument look at this we've got an angel here or a person a lady clinging onto the cross for dear life in this one and just look how beautifully carved that is now on the back of it it says uh, South Africa but here when we look at the grave this is for Simpson Bowes the White Horse Hotel Hebden Bridge August 2nd 1869 to the July 1st 1909 and also his wife who died in 1940 age 67 so that person will have been a local person who was obviously quite notable as the hotel keeper as a publican and what an impressive absolutely impressive monument and I don't know if you can see here at the bottom there's some loops so I'm wondering what's missing what would these loops have connected? Here I found, come in closer Victoria so we can see. So we've got buried elsewhere in this churchyard, a Royal Fusilier, R.A. Thomas, a private in the Royal Fusiliers, 16th of November, 1918, age 21. So they're buried somewhere in this churchyard. There are no remains here. This is a cenotaph. Okay, so I'm in the new churchyard now. It's very windy, so I do apologise if you can't hear me as not as you know as well as you'd like to. But even though this is a new churchyard, there are some absolutely tremendous looking graves in here. Take a look at this one. Now that must be nine or ten feet that cross, and that is for John Sutcliffe and Jane Sutcliffe and Anne Elizabeth Milligan and that is huge so I found another war grave in here in the new cemetery so this one is for B Ackroyd Sergeant B Ackroyd wireless operator stroke air gunner Royal Air Force 27th of January 1944 age 22 now I'm not going to go too close to it but because it is fairly recent but his wife is also here who passed away in 1998 but I'm not going to show hers but I am going to show this one oh my God. right so when anybody comes to this graveyard they go for one grave and that is the grave of Sylvia Plath the poet but where a lot of people don't recognize is that there is actually another poet buried here let me just introduce you to Asa Benaviste or Benaviste 25th of August 1925 to 13th of April 1990 and as you can see there is epitaph foolish enough to have been a poet now oh, sorry camera click there Asa was born in New York but he settled in England in the 1950s and he was a Jewish gentleman 
and hence we've got the stones there. Stones on Jewish graves are a symbol of the brevity of life rather than flowers that wither and die. So it's traditional when visiting a grave where somebody is Jewish to leave a stone in remembrance rather than flowers. Now uh, we are at the grave that is visited most in this cemetery and this is the grave of Sylvia Plath or Sylvia Plath Hughes as she was legally known although separated from her husband at the time of her death aged just 31. So as you can see here lots of people bring uh, flowers and adornments for her, her grave. Even amidst fierce flames, the golden lotus can be planted. It's one of the nicest epitaphs I think I've ever seen or known. And as you guys know, I do go around a fair few cemeteries on my travels. Okay, so that is the end of my little tour today. And, you know, obviously, you know, it, it was nice to sort of see this beautiful place, this lovely cemetery, two churches, um, and, and a a lesser known poet and the name certainly one a more famous one with that beautiful epitaph there from her husband um, it's a really it's a chilly day today it's not very warm it's early February um, I reckon that if you come here in the summer it'd be absolutely glorious you know, Hetchinstall as a village is so beautiful and definitely worth the visit. You could spend a couple of days here and still not find everything. I'm pretty sure that when Andy's video comes out, you'll, you'll see it in all its glory, but get a cup of tea and what have you and make some time because definitely you're going to need it. But that's everything from me today so thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video i hope you found it interesting and uh, take care and i'll see you on the next mrs tvi video bye for now mm -hmm.